So um, this session, this 20 minute session is really a shortened version of a, of a talk I'm giving tomorrow. It's about data security. And data security is interesting because if you, if you think about Cisco, you think, typically think about switches, routers, Wi-Fi, security, uh, application insights, and whatnot. So what does data security have to do with Cisco? Um, actually a lot. Um, I'm Peter Bosch. Um, I'm the CTO for application security within Cisco. We are engaging into um, how to protect an application as it's running inside a public cloud. And the key about a public cloud is that you're running your application, you can't rely on your firewall, your IDS, and your, uh, your uh, other type of functionality because you're running in the cloud. There is no friendly network. So how do you, how do you make sure, sure your application is actually secure? How do you make sure that your application is well taken care of? How do you make sure that the data that the application manages is secure? That's what this talk is about. When I wrote the abstracts, I thought I'm going to talk a little bit about data security, I'm going to talk a little bit, a bit about compliance, but as we um, uh, progressed on this, this journey to get a little bit better understanding of what data security is all about, compliance is an, is an important uh, task, absolutely true, but for now we put a pause on that and we really are going to focus on, on security. So what are the problems in, in security, uh, for data uh, security? So first we, we talked to some of our internal um, uh, teams within Cisco, STO, Cisco's Security and Trust Organization. And they shared with me, Peter, uh, we have all of these repositories out in, uh, in the field that we're using for um, um, transacting with the US government. But we don't know what the data is. We don't know what it represents, we don't know what it does. Yet we have to find that data. We have to understand what that data means. For all I know, Max's information might actually be, be encoded in some of the databases, we don't know where it sits. Turns out, this is endemic uh, across the entire industry because then you look around, and there's a wonderful article here with three um, in, in Wired. Uh, this is about half a year ago uh, where, when Amazon.com, so not, uh, not, not AWS, but Amazon.com, the book company, didn't even know where their data was. And you read that article and it's, it's you've all seen the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. This is the ugly, the worst, and the horrible. They just don't know where that data sits. And, and more, more, moreover, they can't figure out how to actually get their hands around that data. And here we are. I'm doing application security um, together with, with Kashep. Um, and and um, here we're saying you're going to run an application that's going to operate on the data, but we don't even know what that data is, where it, what is represented by the data, and, and what, what value is, is, is captured in that data. This is a quote from last week. JD Sports lost 10 million uh, data for 10 million customers. Uh, we're working with a partner of ours, security.ai. They can tell you how much that data is worth. If this is German PII, or US GI, uh, PII, or Californian PII, it's going to cost an, a, a ton of money to get that recovered. So understanding what that data is, understanding uh, how that data is being managed inside an application is uh, critically important. So you take a step back and, and you try to realize uh, and you try to visualize what we're doing in the industry. Um, very often, and I'm sure that you, you do this as well, uh, very often you run an application on-prem, uh, it's, it's well protected by a firewall, it sits behind a firewall, maybe you deploy an API gateway, but now all of a sudden it becomes the rage to run this out on, on a public cloud. So that means that if you're an enterprise, your customer's data is now being, um, being transported out to the open internet. In other words, the way to think about this, you keep your, you keep your data, data uh, on the internet. If I'm an enterprise, I'm talking to my customers, their data sits on the network. If I lose it, I'm, I'm at fault. Let's, let's for instance, take, 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 uh, take an example of united.com or klm.com or even a local supermarket. Um, they manage that data, it sits out on the open internet. If I, uh, as an enterprise, lose that, basically, my business is going to be in trouble. Imagine that you're an airline and you lose all of the credit card information, or imagine that you're an airline and you lose all of the information with how to refuel a, um, refuel a plane. That plane is not going to fly, it's going to cost a, a ton of money to, 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 to get in the air. So fundamentally, data security is about finding, tracking, classifying the data, knowing what the data is, securing it, make sure that you actually um, uh, understand how attackers can get access to that data, um, and, and, and then the last part, the compliance part, well, this is already big enough, so let's start with, with just the security part. 
So you look at, uh, at application security uh, at its core. What are the three things that, that application security is really about? It's you really want to protect three things. The processor, you don't want anybody to do Bitcoin mining on your, on your processor. And mind you, we've actually had these incidents where we're setting, we're setting up a sandbox and all of a sudden somebody's calculating a Bitcoin on it. You would like to make sure that you can protect the application. Make sure that there is no um, uh, denial of service attack or whether, uh, or make, sure that, make sure that the application does what you, you think it's doing and most importantly, make sure that nobody copies, leaks or encrypts your data. Hey Max, Max, can you uh, ask them to tone down? Next door. Thank you. So then you start looking into 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 the the, the stack um, that that makes up an application. The application is really built up out of four four layers. If I run in a cloud, basically there's a part of things that I patch, and there's a part of things that I fix. The things that I patch are cloud infrastructures, are things that uh, make, make sure that um, I can't even hear myself think. Um, Make sure, that, make sure that the things that uh, go into your cloud deployment actually make sense and, and that you don't introduce a vulnerability inside your cloud infrastructure. And the reason this is important is that attackers are going to use this. There's a wonderful paper by Wiz, one of our competitors, admittedly, uh, that describes in 750 pages exactly how you break into AWS, GCP, and Azure if you use the default configurations, knowing where, you, where you're vulnerable is key. Secondly, there's application infrastructure. I'm running a Kubernetes. If I don't protect Kubernetes, Tesla has found out that yes, so hackers can get in and they can start calculating Bitcoins and they can steal your data. Then you get into application logic, API services, serverless services and whatnot. Um, again, if, if, if I have an open API, somebody can just interact with that API and, and ex ex exfiltrate data. And lastly, of course, that application data itself. So now you look across the entire industry for um, uh, application security. And it's this mosh pit of things. Tons and tons of tons of tools with, with things like cloud security posture things, with, with Kubernetes scanning, with CV scanning, uh, with, with API logic scanning, and then finally at the top there is of course that, that, that control. So fundamentally what we're starting to realize is that yes, tooling is important, but showing where the assets are and showing how these vulnerabilities and these exploits can be misused to get access to those, those resources is kind of key too. So, from, from an attacker standpoint, an attacker really would like to get into this. This is where the end is. This is where, where you really would like to, 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 to get to. And this is the means to an end. They will actually use whatever is in that infrastructure, whether it is in, is in a GitHub repo or in the CI CD chain or in a cloud configuration, they will try to get into, into your applications. Again, now you look into all possible attack flows that exist. The easiest way, of course, is to go directly into an S3 bucket. If the S3 bucket is, is unencrypted, it doesn't have a password, I just go in and I just copy the data. Another way might be, hey, I'm going through, uh, through a vulnerability in an API. I'm using a management interface, I, I, I get to that. And there are, of course, the steps where I first go into a cloud infrastructure, I'm, I'm misusing an admin key, then I escalate my privileges from escalation of privileges, and then uh, go into um, uh, creating a command and control center, and you can make this as complex as you want. There are about 40 or 50 different kind of attack flows that show exactly how you do this. Most importantly, let's not forget that one. Um, I spoke with a company that provides you with, with security for phishing. Do you know how, much, how many people actually respond to a phishing attempt? It's actually in the percents, one to, two, one to three percent. P to one to three people, one to three percent of the people respond to a phishing attack. So now you send a mass mailing out to 3, 300,000 people, you get 9,000 respondents, 9,000 uh, identities I have then, and now I can, uh, as an attacker, I can start to try to get into your application. So, stepping back to, to really do this in a more analytical way, more, 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 uh, provide security um, uh, in a very robust way. We, we, we first need to understand the ways that, that um, people can get into an application. Um, and there are really three or four terms that, that everybody should know. An attack vector is the initial step to get into an application. It may be a phishing attempt. It may be uh, an, a, a password on an, admin, uh, on an admin configuration that has not been set. That's an attack vector. An attack service is basically the, the whole set of these, these things that are out there. And an attack path 
is an interesting one. Very many in the industry are saying that the attack path analysis is the key. But an attack path analysis can only happen after the fact. Somebody broken into the solution, uh, and once they've broken into the solution, now they can understand precisely the steps that have been taken. And I think they're going to do something about the noise. Um, so there's a move in the industry to take that attack path analysis and turn it around. Instead of saying, these are the attack paths that actually happened, pre-calculate the way to break into an application. And of course, this is an, this is an MP hard problem. It's really an attack flow, uh, as per MITRE attack framework. Some, some call this a kill chain, but, but in, in essence, it's really to try to understand which of the hundreds, of, if not thousands of way, uh, ways an attacker can get into an application. That analysis uh, is something that, that uh, we are doing. So, fundamentally, Enterprises need to know the, the potential attack flows into an application to be able to understand where they're vulnerable and then map it on the assets. CPU, application, and data. So what does that look like? Finding the data itself is already a difficult problem, um, as Kachat knows. So what we did is a very simple experiment. We set up um, uh, the, um, the best bags application we dressed it up with a MongoDB and a PostgreSQL and, and a series of other databases, and we told a series of DSPM vendors that are out there, go again, uh, go ahead. Well, we'll just pay the license for um, uh, twenty thousand dollars here, thirty thousand dollars there. Go ahead, try try to find data, and you realize it's a mess. Um, companies can't find the data. Companies can't classify the data. Companies uh, are missing critical pieces. Companies can't co cross-correlate data between the various resources. They don't find log, uh, log files. They don't find Postgres databases. They cannot go into a, a Kubernetes stack. They cannot go into a virtual machine stack. Pretty much the DSPM state of affairs is difficult, with, with a few exceptions out there. So one of our partners in this one, and I'm allowed to share their name, security.ai, is actually pretty decent in this space. We're working with them. And they are able to, 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 to find us the data. So the best bags application, we have three sources. In, in, in California, one, one on the East Coast, and one in France, where we distributed the entire application. And we basically asked them, go find that data. And this is the results. We found data in three regions, uh, in a number of clusters, with nine data sources. And they're able to, to, to classify the data. And more importantly, if they find Max, and sorry to pick on you, Max, but if they find Max uh, is information in, in a particular database, they're also able to be, uh, to be able to cross-correlate this. So Max's information may be here, Max's information may be there, and you cross-correlate that. If I now, in addition, can say, hey, you know what, if I also know something about the application topology, if I know something about the application that's going to run on top of this, now I can start to calculate these attack flows, which is exactly what we did. We have a product called Panoptica, and like I said, I'm the CTO of this thing. Um, Panoptica is about uh, finding vulnerabilities in applications and understanding what the application looks like. So with Panoptica, now we, we can go into the application, we can go into the cloud, cloud posture, we get actually that list of vulnerabilities in the assets that are part of the application. I have the data sources on one side, and I have the um, um, vulnerabilities on the other side. Now what I can do is start going into attack vectors, services, and paths. Now I can actually start to start, start my calculations. So one of the things that you can do, and these are just a few of these, these call flows based on the MITRE attack framework, uh, are things that I can do. So let's assume that I have a series of, of um, assets that I'd like to protect, uh, or assets that I, that, that I know something about. I know a little bit about my cloud posture. I know a little bit what my state of affairs is on, on an on-prem uh, uh, cloud or on a, on, on a public cloud. I know a little bit about my entitlement management. I know what service accounts rights have been given to a solution. Now, uh, in, in essence, I, I know a little bit better on, on what I can do and what I can't do in, in these, these environments. I know a little bit about serverless functions. Server the attack vector against serverless functions happens to be that people will change a serverless function once it's uploaded into, into AWS. So you think you're running application X, but you're really running application X plus a little bit of code that you've never heard of before. Of course, there are, there are those things that go into data security, and there are those things that are in API security, and of course, the, um, uh, the, um, what, what is all the rage now is to understand your software building material combined with your software supply chain, combined with um, uh, understanding where your data comes from. So I'm an associate professor as well at a university here. One of the things that I ask my students is, what would be the easiest way to make sure that you actually break into a piece of software? And then the next question is, um, how many lines of code do you think um, 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 a typical modern car has? 
it's about 200 million lines of code. And then the next question is, of course, the killer. 80% of that code is open source software. So if I want to want to break into a solution, I would go directly into uh, into a GitHub repo, poison that, uh, poison that, and then sometime in the future, three months from now, four months from now, a BMW will call in. Who knows? And the last thing that is important, of course, is of course the understanding what, what what the container posture is and and whatnot. So if I now think about a kill chain for for getting access to data, that's what I would do. Is I would use a cloud config mishap as as what is taught by us by by Wiz. I would change my my role uh, from 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 just the user into an administrative user on on Azure. This 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 is fairly straightforward to do. I may be able to deploy um, a command and control center. So now I'm inside the inside the workload. I'm running a container. It's calling home, and and, and based on that, I can then have uh, attackers try to break into this. I get the credentials. And given that we're talking about data security here, I then connect to an SQL, uh, a SQL service. SQL is just a connection over TCP. Doesn't even need TLS. Um, and what I do is just select star from star. I've dumped all of the data that sits in that database. I exfiltrate it because I have a command and control center, and I lose my data. And to top it off, of course, I can encrypt all of that data, which is, which is really a bonus as a hacker. I can do that, the same thing with, with GitHub repos that, I po uh, that I'm poisoning. So, in essence, what, what this is all about, what data security is all about, is really try to understand how attackers can actually get access to, to that critical asset. I know that I have PII, I know that I have PC, uh, PCI, I know that I have confidential information. Find it across the planet, and then based on that, using these kill chains that, uh, that I'm representing here, I can then try to get into, into those workloads. If I, as a customer, if I'm uh, as, as, a, as an airline, or I, as a, um, uh, a supermarket, hosting all of, all of these things online, I would like to know all of these, these kill chains beforehand. Because then, then, in those cases, I can actually say, uh, I can actually get into those um, deployments and fix them before somebody actually does, does an attack. So tomorrow afternoon, I'll give a, um, a longer version of this with, with a demonstration. I have three minutes. Three minutes is not going to do it justice to do any form of uh, demonstration. Um, but bottom line is that we've mocked this up, what this is going to look like. We'll uh, tie this uh, together with, with actual uh, data sources, tie this together with, with our partner security, um, and, and then um, um, being able to demonstrate and in, in, in visually and very easy to understand, because that's the key, very easy to understand terms to, to, the, uh, to, to, to the owner of the data, how an attacker can misuse it. And that's, I think, transformative for this industry. Let me stop here. Like I said, tomorrow there's going to be um, a longer version of this talk. Uh, if you would like to have a, an in-person discussion with, with knowing exactly what we're doing, with, with timelines and all of these types of things, um, we do require an NDA, but, but again, find me and we can have that conversation. Thank you.